Hello guys, welcome back to Insta Electronics. So this time it's going to be a quick video about how these temperature controlled micro SMD soldering stations really work. So these are available under many different brand names and many different wattages. This one to be specific is a 10 watt or 12 watt unit, I'm no, I don't remember exactly. But these are available from 10 watts to around 15 to 20 watts. Now I personally own one of a similar unit. It's not from this particular brand, it's a different one. You can watch that by clicking the i button up there made a couple of videos later to that now uh, in this instant it's very simple it has an on off switch and a temperature control dial in front of it and that's all about it but this one to be precise it is a semi-functional unit semi-functional because the actual soldering iron tip which is the uh, soldering element which is this part right here uh, it is not functioning so the temperature controller works but the actual soldering iron tip does not work that's the problem with it and you can see it's a permanently attached soldering iron tip it's not replaceable but we are not interested in how this thing works because it's uh, just it's just a coil that gets hot when a power is applied to it so we are not interested in that what we are interested in is how the actual temperature control works inside here so we are going to take it the output waveform in a dso which is sitting here so in a moment we will do the tear down and we will connect the oscilloscope to this one and we will take some readings regarding the output voltage and output waveform. So the theory of operation of these kind of cheap uh, temperature control soldering stations are really simple. All it does is it is connecting a fan speed controller or in more technical terms a chopper AC chopper circuit in series with the primary of a step down transformer. In this case it's a 12 volt transformer the secondary voltage will be 12 volts and as we can see there is a small circuit board which consists of the ac chopping circuit or basically the fan speed controller and it is connected to the primary side of the transformer and you can see the input wire goes straight to the switch and the other wire from the switch is going straight to the fan speed controller and from there it is going back to the remaining wire of the primary now don't worry, I'll put a picture in the screen right now which will bring more sense to what I have just explained. So as you can see in the schematic, they are using a typical triac based AC chopper or a fan speed controller connected in series to the primary of a, a normal step down transformer for its operation. And just because I'm not in my regular uh, recording uh, area, it's much difficult for me to just get a proper shot of this. Especially when I'm recording with one hand, I'm keeping the things with the other hand. But again, I'll put proper pictures on the screen whenever it's necessary to make more sense to what I'm saying. And by the looks of it, I don't think these are imported from China. You know, because it's not even worth importing. The price of it uh, will get much more, much higher because of the weight and other things. The shipping cost itself will be much higher than the actual unit price. So these are primarily made in India itself. Again, you can still buy it from China, but somebody has built it in China first and then the Indians have copied it and they started manufacturing it in India itself. So now let's connect the secondary side of this thing to the uh, CRO. Uh, it does not matter whether we are connecting it to the secondary side or primary side but because you know second connecting it to the lower voltage side is always a much safer option. And it does not matter because whether it does not matter whether we are connecting it to the primary or secondary because it is a transformer and the waveform that you are going to see in the secondary side is going to be the exact waveform that it will be having at the primary side as well so this is at the lowest setting right now and you can see it is uh, showing almost nothing and as i increase the temperature or the potentiometer you can see the waveform is actually becoming a full sine wave so initially it started like a very chopped up circuit or a waveform and you can see it's now going back to that uh, really choppy waveform and the distortion of the signal is because of the uh, transformer action it's not because the signal is really like that but it's more because you know we are measuring it we are taking the readings from the secondary side so there will be some inductive coupling issues and things like that and that's why there is a little bit of distortion but apart from that we can say with confidence that this is going to be the exact same waveform that will be appearing at the primary side as well because it's just a transformer. And in a moment I will give you a close up of the screen 
where which you can see the voltage and frequencies and other parameters of the signal so uh, there is a green LED that is blinking right there as I adjust the temperature the LED will also get uh, brighter or dimmer that's because the LED is connected straight to the secondary side so as we increase the voltage you can see the waveform will become the full sine wave and because of that the green LED will get the full brightness and that's the same thing happening at the heating element as well uh, when we are chopping up the AC signal we are actually reducing the average power that is getting delivered to the heating element and that's why it's, it changes its temperature now here's the close-up of the actual waveform and you can see how the waveform is changing when I am decreasing temperature so as we decrease the temperature the waveform gets chopped up so so much that the heating is really really low and as we increase the uh, temperature the voltage actually increases because it, it becomes more of a sine wave and now you can see I have connected a multimeter and just take a look at the reading as I am increasing the temperature what is exactly happening is the voltage is getting increased so when the sine wave becomes a pure sine wave the voltage is at the maximum and as you reduce the temperature the sine wave becomes distorted and so the average value at the secondary side is also getting lower so because of a lower voltage the heating element will not go beyond certain limit or let's say the heating element will not get that hot and as we increase the temperature the waveform becomes more and more pure sine wave and that means a more voltage being applied to the heating element which results in a higher temperature being produced at the heating element tip so that is how these SMD soldering stations really work it is really that simple so I hope that the video was useful and let's see with a different video so until then thank you for watching guys see you in another video